Assalamu alaikum guys, welcome back to my channel. So, I know I've been MIA for a while, but I am back and henceforth, inshallah, you will be having two videos a week from me. Wednesday videos will be sit down, chatty videos, just covering different topic um, areas in terms of lifestyle and also Dean. And then on Sundays, inshallah, we're going to have more lifestyle videos, a bit more vlogs, a bit more routine videos. And of course, I'm always going to incorporate Islamic reminders in those videos because that's what we're all about on this channel anyways today's video we're going to just you guys are going to join me follow me through my day see what i get up to in terms of you know a person that's working from home and also a little bit outside of the house um what i'm hoping to do with the series of like you know vlogs and routine videos is always give out a positive message and reminder for you guys and today's reminder in today's video is going to be about learning to be appreciative and grateful to Allah for whatever it is we have at the moment in terms of earning. So inshallah, I hope that that benefits you guys. And yeah, so I'm just gonna start off by sharing with you guys a few tools that I like to use to help me have a productive day in terms of my work, especially when it comes to all the paperwork that I have to do, um, both for my coaching as well as for my teaching. And on that topic, today's video has been kindly sponsored by Wondershare and their um, PDF editor called PDF Elements. PDF Elements enables you to edit your current PDFs um, documents either by deleting some text, you can add text, you can add images or add any other um, links from any specific websites that you might choose. It also enables you to convert PDFs into Word documents or PowerPoint documents or even Excel documents. So I find that to be very useful. Another really cool and interesting thing with PDF Element is that it has a built-in optical character recognition tool. So with this tool, you can turn scanned documents into searchable and editable text. Now, some of my students are under the OCR teaching syllabus and I find it very useful because I can I can edit and, you know, search up specific um, words that relate to the OCR syllabus. So as a teacher, I find this to be very, very useful. So I will leave a link in the description box down below for a free trial for this PDF element. OK, so back to today. I have, as you guys seen, <laughs> woken up, got myself ready made me a nice cup of tea sometimes it's too early to, for me to have breakfast nowadays so i just don't even have breakfast when i wake up straight first thing in the morning so i'm gonna sip my tea and then i've got work this morning um i'm teaching uh, a student who's a homeschooling student so i have to leave soon but i'm gonna have my cup of tea and then i'm gonna go and get dressed um and i'll show you guys my outfit and we'll continue with our day live a life of purpose i decided in that moment that my life purpose for the next 12 months would be to become the person i need to be to create the success freedom and quality of life that i truly want i combine this with my other life purpose yes you can have more than one which was to selflessly add value to the lives of others by assembling a team of 16 other sales reps I led weekly conference coaching calls to support them in reaching their goals, free of charge, for the next 46 consecutive weeks. Okay, I am ready to go. I don't know how this is coming off on camera, but this hijab is not white, it's actually cream, kind of creamish off-white. So just a quick outfit of the day. This is how I usually like to dress, I keep it simple, classic, neutral colours, I'm that kind of gal. <laughs> so anyways, the hijab as well as the maxi skirt, I'll show you guys a, a wider image in a minute, is from Modenisa. The cream top underneath is from Zara, H&M, H&M, and just so simple, my quartz bag. Um, yeah, that is me, I am ready to go. So I guess I'll see you guys when I get back. Bismillah. Assalamualaikum. Guys, I'm back. Just returned, alhamdulillah. Came home to a whole bunch of junk mail. This one seems a little bit interesting. So this is Lambeth Talk. You know, like um, those of you in the UK, 
every council you, you get like a leaflet at least once a month kind of updating you on what's happening in your council um, since I am a, a Lambeth resident I like to just flip through this and as I was walking in I noticed that they were there's a page over here about supporting your local shops and buying from your local shops like it couldn't be more important than ever to shop and buy from your local stores because they really need you they need the income as well um, I know it's really easy for us to just go to the big stores and buy from them but you know your local stores really need you and um, it reminded me that the other day I'm actually thinking of I was thinking of getting um, my bathroom floors redone and I know um, of a brother who does interior decorating and all that stuff and he said he could get the floors done for me a couple of months back when I was like redecorating and I just thought back at it and I think he's the best person to recontact to get this done for me because it's better for me to give my um, to give that job opportunity and, and ability to earn to a fellow brother especially knowing how difficult it is nowadays for people to earn a living so yeah, this kind of just goes hand in hand, in hand and I thought I'd actually mention it um, in today's video to just encourage you guys to shop from your local stores. They, they really, really need you guys. They really need you. The other day, in fact, I went to get a maxi skirt from a local tailor and she was just so grateful for the fact that I actually came into her store and, and I bought something from her and it really just goes to show people are really struggling nowadays and there are a few things that we need because I needed a few maxi skirts knowing that I'm going back to work and things like that and so whenever you need something try to go to like your local people and you know help them provide for their families as well so right now I am so hungry so I'm just gonna go and uh, freshen up get into something more comfy and make something to eat before my stomach starts rumbling again because it actually it was rumbling on my way on my way home as I was walking home so yeah let's get some food to eat Bismillah tell me why so I just walk in here I'm like let me get my plate start getting stuff ready <laughs> and then the other goes on so it is time to pray the whole but I'm so hungry but I think I can hold out I just need me a, a little pick-me-up so I'm just gonna have a date just one just one date so keep me going I purchased these add your dates from um, Amazon I'll link them down below for any of you guys who want some they are super chewy like this is kind of if you're too faith strong this might not this might not be the one for you but yeah I have strong teeth from the last so it's been that uh, maybe because I keep it in the fridge as well maybe I should leave them out yeah so I'm gonna get my energy from this one date <laughs> then I'm gonna go pray Salah and then I'm gonna make my food and eat because I just want to be able to just sit chill and eat calmly because I'm sure it's not just me you guys know like when you haven't prayed Salah you just feel some you feel some kind of a way like your heart is not at ease because you know you haven't prayed Salah yet and it's, it's time for Salah mm. Alright, so for lunch, I'm going to be having some basmati rice with stew. If you are West African, you know what stew is. It's just a tomato sauce with chicken. And I have some leftover steamed um, veggies. So I'm going to add that to this and that will be my lunch.
So as I was having my lunch, I got an email from a parent who proceeded to tell me that I told her son, who's my student, that he should only do a maximum of three hours of revision a day. And mom is under the impression that he should be doing more if he needs to reach his target. And it was, I just had to respond to her right away. And it's quite a common, a common thing that I notice about parents who are, you know, really wanting their kids to do so well. There's the assumption that the more that child spends putting their head in their books and reading is automatically going to mean that that child is going to do well without them really understanding what aspect of learning is that child struggling with. This particular student, he has some issues retaining key information and he's also struggling with how to, how to write an effective essay which he really needs in order to do well. So mum, of course, not knowing any of that, she just thinks the more he read, the more he's going to do well. And I had to just say to her, no, that's, that's not the issue because when I get students, I first have to look into what is it that made them fail the first time. Some of these students are reoccurring students. They're students that already studied at school and they, they failed, they didn't do well. So then we have sessions with them to get them to pass and reach their goals. Before you do that, you have to be able to identify what areas of problems does this particular child have and why did they not reach their full potential. So I had to say to her, that's not it. It's all about effective revision. For those of you who might still be students, maybe even if you're at uni, this might help you. Effective revision is different from just sitting there reading a book. Sitting there reading a book for most people isn't an effective way of revising because you'll retain the information that you read maybe in the first hour if you're lucky and everything after that will just kind of like go right over your head and I see it time and time again so many students just sit there and they read and read and read and sometimes you come back to them after a couple of hours and say okay explain to me what information you you got from what you just what you've been reading for the last three hours they will give you about three or four points. After about three or four points, they can't remember any of the stuff they did anymore, which means all that time they sat there with their heads down in looking at their books and reading was a complete waste of time. So I really had to break that down to, to, to the parent and really explain. And I thought, you know what, since I'm just vlogging my day, it might help some of you guys who are students to really learn how to study. Studying isn't just reading. Reading is part of it, but retaining information and being able to express yourself in the way that the examiners are looking for is part of what makes you successful at passing your exams because academic studying isn't like studying for other type of things, you know? It isn't just like listening to an audiobook and being able to remember all the information that you get from an audiobook. It is completely different. Academic studies, it, it requires certain skills for you to be able to do well in those areas. So. So yeah, I'm just sitting here chilling, thinking, let me just finish my lunch and then get on to some work that I've got to do on the computer. And then, yeah, I had I had this comment come in and it's, subhanAllah, this is, this is what happened. This is the world of work. You don't avoid issues just because you work from home. Um, you're still going to always have issues because this student, I actually teach him from home. So yeah, um, hopefully mom understands that I'm waiting for her reply. <laughs> I haven't had any reply as of yet. So hopefully she'll calm down a bit, give the kid a break. Like literally this child has had, not a child, he's a student. This student has only had one session with me so far. One session and she's already of the opinion that he should be doing more than three hours of revision a day. Which I said to her, you know, if he feels that it's effective and that he's retaining the information, then he can increase the hours. But for the first few weeks, I'm not looking for him to increase more than three hours because I want him to keep everything that he's studying. So I've just given him some study tips on how to do effective revision. And then I'll review that every, every lesson before I increase his number of hours. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, alhamdulillah, I finished my food. Um, Anywho, so for this afternoon, I am going to um, do
do some lesson planning. I'm going to plan also for some of my uh, coaching sessions. I want to get as much planning done as possible. I've got some documents to create and things like that and send over to my students and a few of my clients as well. Um, and yeah, that's going to be how I spend my afternoon. It's probably going to take me about three hours. Hopefully only two, but we'll see. I want to get as far ahead with my planning as possible for the month of September. And today is the 7th of September. So yeah, inshallah I can do all the planning for the rest of the month. And then I will be able to chill. I worry about nothing. You are not no one else. All your past are for passion. Oh yeah. Every day when I say Lord, you wash it away. You showed me your mercy. Forgive my past. You tell me love. You tell me patience. I learned from my pain. You're so amazing. I've gained and I've lost. Your love is all I see when I look what I found. No need for searching and for that I say thank you. Next, next, thank you. Next, next, I say thank you. Next, for what you give me, I'm so grateful. Yes, thank you. Next, next, thank you. Next, next, I say thank you. Next, for what you give me, I'm so grateful. Yes, thank you. Yes. Thank you, yes. Thank you, yes. For what you give me, I'm so grateful, yes. Got so much love, got so much patience. I learned from my pain. It turned out amazing. I've gained and I've lost. Your love is all I see when I look what I find. No need for searching and for that I say. I've gotten all my work done, alhamdulillah. So I was there for a few hours just doing all those bits and pieces. So before we close this video, I just wanted to incorporate the reminder, like I said at the beginning that I would. And my reminder for this video is first and foremost, I know things are difficult with the pandemic, the impact it's had on people's incomes and means of livelihood. I know that times are hard, but I just want to remind you to increase in your gratitude to Allah at this moment in time because this trial came to the world yet you and I are still alive if you're watching this video it means you can still afford internet that is almost a luxury so no matter how little we have or we feel that we have no matter how tight things might be right now don't forget to increase in your your gratitude to Allah for what you have because Allah says if you are grateful then he will do what? He will increase you the second thing i want to say is that indeed things might seem hopeless right now it seems as though all the doors of opportunity for work and things like that are closed or that they are limited but i don't want you to walk around with that mindset in your head because if you already walk around you're walking around with the expectations of oh it's so hard to get jobs right now i'm not going to be able to get any job right now i'm not going to be able to earn any living right now because everything is so hard that's the mindset that you're going with then that's what allah will, will, will provide for you that's what he will give you that difficulty because that's your expectation of him but if you have a high expectation to say you know what things might be difficult right now God chooses to bless me he can always bless me in any through any means and through any avenue and so you make your dua and that's why I will increase in, um, that is what I will um, encourage you to do make dua and ask Allah to bless you with beneficial wealth which you can use in the way of Allah and to do good with um, in the Deen I know that oftentimes we are kind of it's kind of like an unspoken rule or thing where it's really discouraged to ask for things that relate to the dunya because it kind of especially when it comes to wealth because it seems like you're being greedy it seems like you're being too focused on the dunya but let's keep it real at the end of the day that's how we feed and take care of ourselves so it's necessary and Allah is the wealthiest of the wealthy so risk comes from him he is the owner of risk it all belongs to him so how do you think you're going to get it by not asking him for it so i i will encourage each and every single one of you to continue to ask allah to bless you with beneficial risk and to guide you in how to use it because a lot of people have risk in in different um in different avenues and different you know ways 
but sometimes it becomes their downfall and that's what you don't want you don't want just to fill up your door with give me wealth give me wealth give me wealth when that wealth could end up coming at your detriment so you always want to make the order that Allah grants you wealth that will be of benefit to you and also to others as well and for Allah to put barakah in it because I'm telling you I keep saying this all the time some of us don't earn as much as other people earn but because there is barakah because there is blessing in that earning that we have we are able to achieve so much more with it, so much more with it and we're so much more content with it. It brings us peace in our lives and it doesn't bring us increased problems in our lives. And so it's very important to, when you do ask for Allah to increase you in wealth, that you ask him to grant you wealth that will be of benefit. So I ask Allah to make things easy for you and I. The book I was listening to um, this morning, some of which you guys may have heard, was The Miracle Morning. And they were talking, the guy was the... Um, the writer of the book who was recording the audio was saying the same exact thing about learning to be grateful for whatever little it is you have before you can you can have more so i just wanted to incorporate that into today's video and never look down at your job not everyone needs to be an entrepreneur to be successful um however the means allah is going to provide for your success be grateful for that whatever your job be grateful for that as long as you are earning an honest living you are not cheating anyone and your income is halal say alhamdulillah and ask allah to put barakah in it so i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for both you and i to help us trust him more during these difficult times to help us to be productive and successful in our efforts both this world and the hereafter so guys that is the reminder for today. I am going to chill, relax, make some dinner, um, pray Maghreb when Maghreb comes in and I think it's just gonna be a Netflix and chill night <laughs> for me, henceforth. I hope you benefited from today's vlog. If you like um, the, the way that these vlogs are going, let me know if there's anything else you think I can incorporate to make it better. Do let me know as well. I just think it was a little bit more interesting rather than you guys just sitting there watching me talk for the whole 10 minutes or so. And yeah, inshallah, guys, I will see you guys in my next vlog. It might be um, quite an interesting one outside of the house because I'll be, uh, my friend and I are going to go out and have lunch one of these days. And uh, I think I will include it. She's been a massive supporter of this channel for a long time. So it's about time she showed herself. <laughs> you guys might not see her face, but anyway, we'll be out of this house for some of the vlog at least. So you get different scenery. So yeah, I hope you guys join me for that and whatever the reminder of that video will be, inshallah. I will see you guys in my next one. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.